Over the last couple of years, desktop resin 3D printing has gained a ton of popularity with the release of a lot of these smaller budget friendly machines. To me, it feels like it's going a lot of the way of the way extrusion based 3D printing went where the machines are getting uh, lower in cost, the quality is getting better, they're getting bigger, there's more and more materials, and this is fantastic because it makes these machines more accessible and more attractive to more people to get into this technology. And it's really no surprise to me that these machines have gained as much popularity as they have with the high resolution detailed parts that you can get off of these printers. And I mean, even for me that's been printing with these machines quite heavily for the last couple of years, I still get a awesome looking part off the machine and I am mind blown at how just fantastic <laughs> this part that was just created out of a liquid resin looks. In last week's video, we reviewed the Orter Obsidian, which was a desktop FDM based 3D printer. And I mentioned in that video that I've been kind of disappointed with a little bit of the machines coming out lately with so many of them being just a blatant copy and paste where the only difference between A machine and B machine is the tiny little logo on the front. So when I do see a company that's doing things a little bit different or having their own take on things or maybe you know adding something to the machine that's not the same as everyone else, it's pretty exciting to me. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Nova 3D Bene 4 Mono desktop resin LCD printer. And this is a 3D printer that uses a monochromatic LCD screen. We are going to be talking about the features or the specs on this machine, what the setup process looks like, what the prints look like, and what my overall experiences look like. And I will talk about the things that I like, I'll talk about the things that I don't like so much, and at the end of that, I will give you my final conclusion. I hope you guys are excited, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off, let's take a look at the machine spec. So the Bene 4 Mono is based off of the predecessor, which was the Bene 4, with the main difference being that Mono, which is the implementation of a monochromatic LCD screen. Now, most of you that know resin 3D printers or have done enough research know what the monochromatic LCD screen means, but for those that don't, a brief summary is that the LCD screen on a resin 3D printer is a consumable. So it's basically the masked layer between your UV light source and your liquid resin that's being cured. And as that UV light source passes through that LCD screen, it's actually degrading it. And over time, it needs to be replaced. Well, with a standard LCD screen, you'll have to replace it every certain amount of 100 hours. Now, this has a pretty big range depending on if you get lucky, how much you print in one certain spot, and another of uh, a wide range of other kind of environmental factors, while the monochromatic LCD screen can last for thousands of hours. So you have a much longer life expectancy of the monochrome versus the standard LCD screen before it's time to be replaced. Now, if that isn't enough reason to be excited about it, it also allows you to cure your parts much quicker. The UV light source has a much easier time passing through the monochromatic LCD screen. So for example, let's say on the standard LCD screen, each 50 micron layer takes you eight to 12 seconds to print. Well, on the monochromatic LCD screen, that same 50 micron layer can be printed in two to four seconds. So your parts are able to print out much quicker. There's no loss in quality because it's the same you know, panels. In this case, it's a 2K uh, LCD screen that's being used, but it is an awesome thing. It is the way that this technology is going. And I, I think that pretty much all new resin 3D printers coming out, this is almost gonna be a standard that it needs to have a monochrome LCD screen because with how low cost monochrome LCD screen printers are now becoming, it just makes sense because you don't have to do nearly as much maintenance and you're printing out parts way quicker than you ever could on a standard LCD based printer. The build volume on the Bene 4 Mono is 130 by 80 by 150 millimeters. The build plate is made up of aluminum and it slides up and down on a lead screw in what is possibly the largest linear guide I've ever seen on a resin printer. The vat is also machined out of aluminum and has a nice little max line, which is perfect because when you're pouring in resin and you don't want to pour in too little, but you wanna make sure you've got enough, you know exactly the spot where if you pour it up to here, you don't have to worry about the bed coming down and resin getting everywhere. So I always like to see that as an included thing on the vat. The base of the printer is incredibly rigid and it feels like it was very well built. The front of it has a power button and a four and a half inch touchscreen, which is one of the brightest, clearest touchscreens also that I've seen on a resin 3D printer. As for the sides of the machine, they are both pretty much plain with the left side having a small little access door for those times when you do actually need to replace that LCD screen. So that way you can easily get in there and undo and redo the tiny ribbon cable that connects to the LCD panel. On the back of the machine, you will find a power jack. You will also find a USB port and a ethernet port. 
The printer does have eight gigabytes of internal storage, so you can transfer files directly to the printer and it has Wi-Fi, which is a super rad feature. And that is how I ran all of my prints. So looking at the machine, the top cover looks pretty standard to just about all of the resin printers that I've used, where it's just this kind of acrylic top panel that helps to block out the UV light, but it's quite different. And the main difference is that it's actually bolted to a beefy hinge. And so when you do need to pour resin, take your part out, put the plate in, instead of having to take your hands and remove the lid, you can literally just use one or two fingers and push the lid back and it tilts out of the way. Now, this might not sound like a big deal, especially to someone that hasn't resin 3D printed before, but anybody that's used a machine like the Elegoo Mars where you have to take the top off, it is incredibly difficult to not get resin on that machine. Like I've tried so hard to keep my fingers off and use my palms to remove the lid, but I always get resin on it. And if you don't clean it up quick enough, after a while it starts to nearly bond with that uh, top cover. So again, small-ish detail, but still pretty sweet that you can just push on the top cover very easily with just you know one finger and the whole thing moves out of the way. On the hardware side, that pretty much covers just about everything. So let's quickly talk about what the machine comes with. The machine came in a box that was really well packaged, surrounded by tons of thick foam. With the printer, you also get some extra goodies. You get a spatula, you get some gloves. There is a little kind of paper filter if you need to pour resin back into the bottle to remove any little cured resin bits. There is a spare FEP sheet because that is also a consumable and there is a small bottle of resin, which is pretty rad because that's definitely not a standard. Out of the many resin printers I've tested out, I can count on well, with two, three fingers how many resin printers actually come with a little bit of resin. So you won't need, I recommend getting more resin when you get the printer, but you won't need to get more resin to open the printer up and get started with a print. As far as setup goes, it's quite similar to most of the other resin printers I've used where you press a button on the menu that will run a little test uh, image on the LCD screen. And the purpose of that is to just check to make sure that the UV uh, light source and that the LCD screen is working correctly. It basically just displays an image that says test image, 10 seconds. So I did that and then I went ahead and got the bed on and installed and had it lowered so that way I can start the leveling process, which is when I discovered that the bed was actually leveled already. And this is not something any resin printer I've used before came with. You always have to level it. And even in this instance, I would still say it's a good idea to check that your resin printer is leveled if you get this machine, but it does look like based off of the paperwork and documentation that it is factory leveled. So technically you shouldn't have to do any leveling, but again, checking to make sure that the tension is right is a plus because if it's too close and pushes into your LCD screen, you could damage that precious LCD screen. And if it's too far away, well then your prints won't stick and you might get cured parts in your vat. So just double check it. It's really quick to do. And if you need to make any adjustments, there are just a couple of small screws on top that you can turn with the included Allen keys to adjust the bed accordingly. After the simple setup, I was ready to do some printing. So I shook up the bottle of included resin and I poured it in the vat and it is exactly enough resin to fill the vat up to the max line. So I went ahead and did that. And then I checked to see if there was any files ready to print on the included storage on the machine. And I did find two files. So I ran the first file, which I believe was titled something just along the lines of test print. And I hit go. I checked on this print multiple times while it was going on. And I swore the whole time that something was wrong or that it was failing because it was just very strange looking with these tiny little like arm things coming off. and. I let it finish just because I wanted to see what was going on and it turned out beautiful. It's actually this really bizarre model that says Nova 3D and has these kind of like mesh ball things connected by small strands. I'll place some footage because if I try to describe it uh, using my words, it doesn't really make sense. But either way, it was a really cool model and I definitely could see kind of why they went that route because if you're someone new to resin 3D printing and that's the first test file that comes off, you're definitely gonna be a little giddy at that point. So once that model was completed, I checked and there was a, another model on the flash drive, which was just called Octopus that I went ahead and printed out. It was a pretty quick two to three-ish hour print. It was kind of this cool steampunk octopus with movable arms that was just a really rad print and also just turned out fantastic. Now that I had done the test prints, I was ready to do some prints of my own. I didn't exactly know what I wanted to print, so I went over to my mini factory and found a really cool Jack Skellington or Nightmare Before Christmas model that was five different parts that went together. And I figured this would be a perfect test print to run on this machine. 
So I went ahead and downloaded the model and this is where we need to talk about software. Anybody that's been watching my channel for an extent of time at all knows that Chit2Box is my go-to slicer for resin 3D printing. It's used by the majority of manufacturers and printers out there and for good reason. It's quite stable, it's actively developed and it has a ton of awesome features. The Bene4 model on the other hand has its own file type that requires you to use their own slicer, NovaMaker. Now, for someone that hasn't gotten used to chit box this might not be such a big deal, but for me, it definitely felt like it was heavily lacking in options. The main issue that I ran into was that I couldn't figure out how to hollow a model, and after doing a lot of searching, I'm not convinced that you can actually do that in their software. The support settings were also quite limiting. For the models I did end up slicing in NovaMaker, I didn't hollow them out, and the default support settings did seem to work fine, but for models that do require additional supports or that need hollowing, I'll basically be going over to Chit2Box, doing all the hollowing, adding the supports, exporting them into NovaMaker, slicing them, and then sending them off to the machine. With that being said, it's really not the end of the world since you have this workaround, but it's definitely an unnecessary additional step, and I really just don't see the point of first-party resin slicers when Chit2Box works so well. Even if they do keep their slicer as an option, I'd really love to see the implementation of a plugin for this printer in Chit2Box, or a file type that makes it work directly with Chit2Box for those that want to go that route. Bouncing back over to the print, the four plates that I ran, which I probably could have compacted into maybe three plates, they all turned out absolutely fantastic, except the final print, but this was not a fault of the machine, but my fault. I thought that I had enough resin, and in the last 20 minutes of the pumpkin print, it ran out of resin, and the pumpkin's eyes did not complete, which made me really sad, because I, the model was looking so good up until that point. Luckily, Nova 3D had sent me over a bottle of their water washable gray resin, which is literally a one-to-one -one in color of gray to their standard model resin. So I went ahead and poured that into the vat, went over to the slicer, changed the setting from standard to their water washable, which to be honest with you, I didn't see very many settings or any settings changed. So it seemed like they're nearly the same profiles and I hit print. And just like with their standard model resin, the water washable resin turned out fantastic and the pumpkin looks great. This printer is really quiet and while printing the only sound I could hear at all was the FEP releasing after each layer. I couldn't hear any sounds coming from the fans which is definitely something that I'm not used to on a resin printer. I then went ahead and found a bust over on my mini factory called Efreet Sultan which was a super cool model that I printed out and it turned out also really great. For the bust as well as the Jack Skellington model I'll place links down below in the description so that way you can check out the models and print them out for yourselves if you want. You can also check out the artist other work because since these models are really rad I'm assuming these artists also have some really other cool models that you might want to check out. So kind of recapping on my experience with the Bene4 Mono, all in all this machine surpassed my expectations on just about every level. The rigidity of the machine, the linear rail for the z-axis, the tilting back motion, the big LCD screen, the uh, Wi-Fi in integrated is just awesome. The, it, even the built-in storage is a really cool feature. There are a ton of good things about this machine. The biggest drawback, which I just mentioned a moment ago, is the slicing software. It is just incredibly lacking and needs development or they just need to open the floodgates and allow it to have implementation uh, with Chit2Box. The only thing I could see is that you still might have to go through their software just to Wi-Fi transfer it over to the printer, but still I think that there's got to be some better way to integrate those two things together and just make it a more seamless experience for the end user. At the time of making this video, you can find this printer over on Amazon for roughly $400, but there is a promotion going on right now where it gets you get a pretty sweet ultrasonic cleaner, which is really nice to have for post-processing your prints. However, the manufacturer did let me know that for Black Friday, this machine will be 20% off, which I think brings the price down to $320, which is pretty sweet. So keep your eyes open for that if it's something you're interested in, and I will place links in the description over to the Amazon listing, so that way you can check it out for yourself. If you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links in the description over to my Patreon, where there are some super cool rewards. and. I, as always, want to say a huge thank you to my current Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing, and I really appreciate you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video, and I'm out. Peace, guys.